Now, rather than getting the paintbrush tool and doing it all over again, I decided I wanted to be a bit more precise with this, so I've already prepared this file for you. If you come up to where your layers palette is, you will see there are the channels palettes and the paths palette up here on the right hand side. If you go ahead and choose the paths palette, you'll see a cutout I've already created for the fabric, and if you just go ahead and click on that, you'll see a vector path appear around the outside of the fingernails, and it just basically encompasses all of the green fabric. So what we're going to do here is use an accurately created path to produce an area we could then use as a layer mask. This is very handy when you are isolating areas to apply your color changes to. Instead of physically going through and painting all of the pixels, use a selection and then we can use a filter to control it instead of painted pixels. So what I want you to do is hold down your Apple key or the control key on the PC and put your cursor over the name of the path and you'll see the cursor changes to a small selection icon. Go ahead and click and that will turn that path now into an active selection. But what do we do with it? Well, if we come back across to the layers palette, we can see we still have our original two layers Two options we could have. We could go ahead and create ourselves a brand new layer, obviously then set its blending mode to color and fill it with a color. Easy enough. What I like to do though is if you come down to the adjustment layer options, and this is wonderful for doing all types of color adjustment, if you choose any particular one of these adjustment layers when you have a mask active, it automatically creates the adjustment layer with a layer mask applied to it. So we're going to go ahead and choose hue and saturation. When you go ahead and choose it, three things will happen. The first one is the selection has disappeared from around the outside. Well, that's perfect. It's just been deselected, but it has been used. Secondly, the hue saturation dialog box has obviously come up because this is the filter we're now using. And thirdly, in the layers palette, you'll see the adjustment layer has been applied, but it also has a perfect layer mask applied to it based on the selection we had active a second ago. All we have to do now is come down and choose colorize in the hue saturation filter. You'll see now it beautifully colorizes the background based on whatever hue angle that we wish to choose. So we can pull it off here, just grab the hue slider inside this window, and just rotate through. Go through and choose any color you want that sofa to be, drag back and forth, and get it exactly where you want it. I'm actually going to set it for more of a turquoisey blue. And then the saturation, it's up to you if you want to increase it, get a little bit more heavy, more sort of TV image based, or even drop it back so it's slightly more toned. Okay, so it's totally up to you. I'm going to go for somewhere in the middle here. All right, now once you've applied that, go ahead and click OK. Obviously at any time, if you want to change the color of that sofa now, all you've got to do is double click once again on this icon for the hue saturation palette. All the settings are still there, all you've got to do is change them. This is much better than making a selection and using hue saturation to begin with, because again, it's destructive. Using these effects, totally non-destructive, you can go back and change at any time. 